Okay, so in this video, we're going to try and find the mean and variance of the exponential distribution. So how are we going to do about that and where do we start? Well, first of all, we need to find the PDF of the exponential distribution. So our PDF for this is f of x, that's our function, and x is our variable, equals lambda e to the negative lambda x. That's our PDF. Now we've got two terms in here as in variables. We've got lambda, which is our parameter. So for the exponential distribution, lambda is always greater than zero. And the same applies to our x, but it can also equal zero. So x is in the range of zero and can go all the way to infinity. So that's going to help us find in our mean and our variance. And the next thing we need to work out is what are we going to do to find our expectations, i.e. our mean. So to find the mean of this uh, distribution, exponential distribution, we've got e of x equals the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x f of x dx. That's our function to find our mean, i.e. the expectation of x. So that's our integral and that's our f of x. So that's where we can go from here. So now we've got from negative infinity to infinity of x times lambda e to the negative lambda x uh, integrated with regards to x. Okay, now our x in the range of negative infinity to infinity, some of the values don't even come into it. So the probability that x is in negative infinity to zero, that equals zero. So negative values of our x do not count. So this here tells us we can now change our parameters of integration. So now we can go from zero to infinity and x. Now we've got lambda here, which we can bring out because we're integrating with regards to x. So we can put our lambda here, but then just write exponential to the negative lambda x. Okay, so this we need integration by parts to integrate this. U sub here, I'm not really fancying it, but we've got one term here and one term here. So let's do that. So integration by parts. So our formula for integration by parts is u dv equals uv minus the integral of v times du. So basically all this is, is just, it's not a u sub or a v sub. This is just breaking down our integral into a u and a dv. So we need to pick one of those. And then this is the answer to our integral. Okay, so we've got a u here, a u here, and a du here. So ideally what we're looking for is something that we can differentiate out. Because if we take the differentiation of u, we end up with du. So the only one we can differentiate to disappear into a constant maybe is our x. The exponential, no matter how many times we integrate or differentiate, it's not going to disappear. So let's call our u our x. So u equals x, in which case we have our dv is e to the negative lambda x. And then we're just simply left with du equals 1. And our v is our integral of e to the negative lambda x. So in this case, we take the uh, exponential, so the reciprocal of our exponential power. So v equals negative 1 over lambda. And then we've got e to the negative for lambda x. So we can just write this on the top. We just put a multiply sign there if you like, or actually I'm going to put a bracket. That's probably a bit more clearer. Okay. So now we're ready to plug in our formula to make our answer to this integral. So we've still got our lambda, which is outside. 
So we'll enclose that in a big square bracket. And then we've got UV, so that's X times this. So we've got negative X lambda, so negative X over lambda, and then E to the negative lambda X. So that's our first part of our solution. And now we need to calculate this over our range of integration. So that's from zero to infinity. And then we can subtract, subtract that from this new integral. So, so we're going to subtract this integral. So from zero to infinity, V, which is this one, and our du, which is this one. So that just leaves this function here to integrate. So we've got negative e to the negative lambda x over lambda dx. And then not forgetting to put brackets around the whole thing. Okay, let's calculate what this is. So now we've got lambda so we're going to subtract when x is infinity. Well, if x is infinity, this becomes zero. So we've got e to the negative lambda x. Whatever you put in for the negative lambda, uh, it doesn't matter. But negative infinity, the exponential will become zero. So that becomes a zero. And then subtract that. But when x is zero, in which case this term disappears, negative x over lambda, Regardless of the value of that, that is also zero. So that's nice and neatly just disappears. And now we're left with a new integral. So we've got minus, minus, so that becomes positive. And then we've got zero to infinity. Another constant multiple here, lambda, that will cancel out this lambda. So I'm just going to write inside here, 1 over lambda, just so as you can see it, and then I can cancel those out. And then we're left with e to the negative lambda x dx. Okay, so let's just simplify that off a little bit now. So these, as we said, can cancel out. That's fine. This becomes 0. So all we're left with now is this integral here. So we've now got e to the negative lambda to the x, just take the integral of that. So now we're left with negative. Okay, so let's try and evaluate what we've got so far. So let's take that off. So we've got to evaluate x at infinity. Well, this will become zero as we worked out here. e to the negative infinity is zero. So this then becomes, let's just write e of x. That's, that's what we're looking for equals zero and then we subtract our value of x at zero so e to the negative lambda times zero that just becomes one and then minus one over lambda times one is minus one over lambda that's minus one over lambda so therefore our e of x these two will cancel out and leave us with a positive so e of x equals one over lambda. So that's our expectation of our x. Now we need to try and do the same as this function here, except find e to the x squared. That's going to be our next task. So I'm going to rub this off the board and then we're going to try that integral. Okay, so we found our expectation of x. Now we need to try and find the variance. So the variance of x is e to the x squared minus e to the x squared. Now these are different terms. This is the second moment. This is just the mean squared. Well, the mean, we can square that. We've already found that. So now we need to find e of x squared. So e of x squared is as we did before when we found our mean, we just multiply the PDF by x squared. So that equals negative infinity to infinity of x squared and our f of x, I'm just going to write straight in, e to the negative lambda x dx. Now the parameters of this was just the same as the mean. So we go negative infinity to infinity 
uh, sorry, negative infinity to zero, the probability is zero anyway. So we can discount that. And the lambda I can bring out front. So let's just do that first. So now we've got zero to infinity. Our lambda we can bring out front. And then just leaves x squared e to negative lambda x dx. Now this is a very similar integral to what we used for the mean, except we've got x squared here. So this is now going to require integration by parts twice. So let's use our lambda out the leave our lambda out front, and then using our formula, which is u dv. So in this term, this time we've got x squared we will have as our u. So this term here will become x squared. So I'm just going to write that up here because we're going to need this again in a minute, I think. So u equals x squared, in which case du equals 2x. And our dv will be the same, and our v will be the same here. So I'm just going to tidy that up a little bit. So our dv is this one, and we're just left with negative e to the negative lambda x over lambda. Okay, so let's box this off in here. Let's box this off in here as our integration by parts. And here we've got a new one for integration by parts twice. So integration by parts twice. Okay, our u dv, so using this and this, our u dv is x squared and e to the minus x. So our solution is u times v, which is x squared times v, which is e to the negative lambda x. So we've got x squared e to the negative lambda x divided by lambda. And that's evaluated, let's just put that in brackets, from zero to infinity. And then we subtract that from our next integral, which is also evaluated from zero to infinity of v times du. So now we've got 2x times our v, which is e to the negative lambda x. So we've got negative 2x e to the negative lambda x all over lambda. And that's integrated with regards to x. Okay, so this is our integral. So as we did before, we need to evaluate this at zero and infinity. Now I'm going to let you guys check this, but that's just going to leave us with uh, zero. And then we can subtract this integral here. And now this one here, this is what we're going to integrate now. This is where the integration by parts comes in, because we're going to need the negative 2x and the e to the negative lambda x. We're going to use the integration by parts for that again. So our lambda here we'll take out. So 1 over lambda, and then integral from 0 to infinity. Now we've got negative and negative, so we change this to positive, they cancel out. And then we've got 2x e to the negative lambda x dx. Okay, right. We've got this lambda here and this lambda here. They can cancel. So that will cancel that one and that one. So now we just concentrate on this integral here. So just going to modify our formula for integration by parts from the first go. So our 2x, I'm just going to change this u to 2x. And in this case, our u will be 2. And then we'll be left with the same for here. So let's go for that. So now from 0 to infinity, using our formula, u dv, so 2x and e to the negative lambda x, we've got uv, so we've got 2x times this, so we've got minus 2x e to the negative lambda x over lambda, evaluated from 0 to infinity, and then subtract the new integral, 0 to infinity, of v times du. So du is 2, and we've got this one here. So we've got negative 2e to the negative lambda x 
over lambda with regards to x. Okay, so as we did here, again, this one is going to disappear. So that becomes our zero yet again. We've got two negatives here, so they become a positive. And we've got a two here, so that can come out front, so it gives us a two. And then over our lambda, that can also come out. So this integral seems to simplify up really rapidly. And then we're just left with e to the negative of lambda x to take the integral of that. And then, so then all we've got to do now is multiply that by 1 over lambda with a minus sign. And then e to the negative lambda x. e to the negative lambda x. Okay. And that's evaluated from 0 to infinity. Okay, so now we're ready to evaluate our e of x squared using this formula. So all we're going to do now is plug in x equals 0 and x equals infinity. So let's just write here e of x squared. Let's do our calculation here. So 2 over lambda multiplied by minus 1 over lambda times this when x equals infinity. Well, if x equals infinity, this term here all becomes 0. So that's a 0. And then when x equals 0, e to the negative 0 just becomes 1. And then we've got 2 times minus 1 over lambda times lambda. So that then becomes minus minus 2 over lambda squared. So that's just going to leave us with 0 minus minus 2 lamb over lambda squared. Just going to leave us with 2 over lambda squared. So we can just update that now as to 2 over lambda squared. OK, so now that's all our components now to work out our variance. So let's put this off the board and then we can go. OK, so our variance of x is now e to the x squared, which is 2 over lambda squared. And then we're going to subtract e to the x squared. So 1 over lambda squared. 1 over lambda squared. OK, now we can do this. This is 2 over lambda squared minus 1 over lambda squared. So that's just 1 over lambda squared. So that's our variance of our exponential distribution. OK. It's all about integration really, but we got there in the end. So that's our expectation of x, and this is our variance of x. Okay.